Yeah. We gotta get them shelves up, Jeffy. I think I bonked the camera a little bit, but yep, it's... Yep, you definitely did. <laughs> Why don't I blow in a coffee and it pops my glasses up? Do you actually love that, or is that just something that you said? It's just so nice and warm. Can you see my Disney? Can you see it? Kind of. See it now? It says Disneyland. Yeah, and then there's a castle. And welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. Exactly. We have coffees today, but don't be fooled. Unfortunately, it's not Saturday. It's also instant coffee. I was too lazy to make the percolator pop coffee. We have a new coffee machine. It's a Ninja hot cold brew system. It's amazing. I love it. But sometimes you just need to boil a kettle and yep. pour it on some hey, disgusting coffee grind. <laughs> Anyways, our mugs match my shirt. They do. It's black and then it has like sun. And again, and I want to also mention, I know that there's a spot on my sweater. Poop. It's not, it's paint. Piece of poop. It's paint. Why don't you wash your poop sweater? We are here to do another episode of Board Game Snapshots. Ja! Ja! Hopefully that wasn't too loud. Jeff is just assaulting people's ears every time we do one of these I don't. Videos. I can't go quieter than that. That's as quiet as he goes. We are doing, like I said, board game snapshot, which means we are doing five mini board game reviews, four of which have been selected by our Patreon community. So we put up a poll usually every month and they get to vote on what games we talk about. If you want to vote on these games, you could always join our Patreon. You can join the Patreon. Yeah, you get to vote for that every level from Team Jeff and Team Jamie up. I think. Yeah, you get yeah. access to playing games with us on BGA. Yep. Private Discord channel. Yep. You know? That's for sure. Behind the scenes stuff. Mm hmm You get to vote on our intros for the holiday season. Anyways. Let's, let's go. Go. Let's. Let's. Go. go. Let's. 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 Go. You have no idea how often we do that just in everyday life. First up, we have from sent to us from Asmodee Canada, mm -hmm. uh, voted on by the people. Voted, voted on, by, on people. by the people from Days of Wonder. That is Heat. Pedal to the metal. Pedal to the metal. Heat is a racing game in, in my opinion, the most purest form. In Heat, you are each racing. Oh. racing by playing out cards that represent movement along the track. There are what's the engine fire cards called? Heat. There yeah. are <laughs> the name of the game. <laughs> there are heat cards which are bad, which can like kind of fill up your deck, and they're kind of useless. You have and to if you, pay for things with heat. And if you don't have heat, and you go around corners, which you need to slow down for, if you go too fast, you'll spin out, which is very detrimental mm -hmm. to your overall race. But in heat, basically, you're playing out cards. There's a really interesting gear shift mechanic mm -hmm. that allows you to like kind of slow down your car and maybe cool down your engines and get rid of some of your heat from your hand. Basically tells you how many cards you can play. So you have to be really strategic mm -hmm. with that. Gear yeah, shift. like the gear shift is one to four. And depending on what gear you are in, if mm -hmm. you're in gear four, you can play out four cards and go super fast. Yeah which is top gear, but as you approach corners, you need to slow down because each corner has a value associated a with it. Speed limit around Which the is like a speed limit, and if you go too quick, you'll you'll basically have to pay heat. Yes. Because your engine's heating up mm -hmm. by going too fast, and if you don't have enough heat to spend, you will spin out. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, so this game comes with a bunch of content. We have played the basic version, which they recommend that you start with. So it comes with four different maps that you can play with. The basic version is the USA. So USA, mm -hmm. yeah, basic. Yeah, basic. <laughs> According to this game. And then it also has Italy, France, and Germany. We've only played on the USA and the France, France. map, yep. but there are four different maps. And then on top of the base game, there's also like five different modules, which we have played with three of. So mm -hmm. the first module is called the garage module. You get to like build your car. In the basic game, you have three basic upgrade cards, but in the garage module, you get to choose from a huge stack of different, more advanced upgrades. Yeah, it's like tire, new tires, engine mods. Yeah, different body. There's um, so many to choose from. And the from. cards all do different things. Exactly. So you get to basically build your car. Mm -hmm. That's the benefit of it. Then the next module they have is called the legend module and that introduces AI racers which is really great if you're playing as a solo game or if you're playing a two-player game. They don't recommend you use it for four 
players plus, but we played it as a two player. And, and they added, fast. And we added in two AI cars. Yes, they're very fast. <laughs> However, they're fast, but the race was still close. Mm -hmm. There was The game is very good at keeping things tight. It's a really unique movement way. I would say that my biggest critique of this game mm -hmm. is the way that the AI portion, the legend module, is worded. It's yep. a little confusing, but once you get a grasp of it, it's it makes sense. Yeah. Basically. I, I would say that was the biggest hurdle for us so far in this game was for sure. just trying to figure out the verbiage of how the AI worked. Yes, definitely. They beat us, so it is what it is. There is also a weather condition module, which we've also played with, which allows you to not only put a weather condition on the race as a whole, but it also allows you to put little, like, what are they called? Little different, like, modules or changes on each corner mm -hmm. or each section. So you draw those randomly. As an example, it might increase the speed limit of a corner. It might decrease the speed limit. It might yeah. make the weather take effect. So it just gives it a little bit of an extra something something. Yeah. And then there's also a championship module, which turns the game into a bit of a campaign. So you're playing through three different years. It's like 1961, 62, 63, and there's a certain number of races on certain tracks. So it's a bit of a campaign. And then finally, there's also a tournament mode, which is if you want to play really competitive, you can play a full on tournament in this game. So much variability. There is a ton of game in this box. Yes, and you can mix and match those modules. You can just play base game and you will be perfectly fine. Each map plays a little bit different because they have, like the France map has a ton of corners. So it's harder to kind of like- Get a top speed going. Yeah, to there. balance your hand and you have to think about all of those things. I really, really like this game. One of the designers of Flam Rouge designed this game. So you will see certain elements Definitely of that some with yeah. this game, like where the cars are allowed to be. There's the slipstream slip streaming in this yep. game, which works a little bit differently than it does in Flam Rouge. I still need to play this game more because if I were to compare the two, my preference is Flam Rouge over Heat. However, we have only played this at two players and I think this game would completely shine with more. It's super, super fun. Yeah, quickly for me, this game has kind of like blown me away a little bit. I'm actually head over heels for this. Yeah. I can't really say that it like replaces Downforce because Downforce has like the bidding element to it. It's almost like a different, it's a different game. It's a different game. Yeah. This is pure racing. I haven't played any like Formula D or like a uh, Rally Man GT. I haven't played any games like that that mm -hmm. might be like more pure racing games, but mm -hmm. this is pure racing. Yeah. I mean, you have to break for turns, you have to shift up, you have to shift down. You have all of these little things to think about. The game resonates with like the theme of racing so well, mm -hmm. because even the really like hairpin turns are like a two and you really have to slow down, yeah. like pretty much to a halt in order to get around a hairpin turn. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah they've done a great, great job. It's fantastic. Yeah. So definitely recommend there is a lot of game Very, in that box. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is a lot of game. I'm excited to... Play it more, 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 more. Box lights on upside down. The next one that was voted on by our Patreon community is Obsession. Pride, Intrigue, and Prejudice in Victorian England. This one was sent to us by the publisher Kayanta Games. Mm -hmm. So thank you to them for sending this along. This game is one that I was excited for for forever because Max and Danielle from Table Knots loved it. And that just made me want to play it. So essentially, this is set in, as you would imagine, Victorian England. You are a noble family. You got some money, okay? And you've got your little estate. In the game, you are going to be doing different activities in order to attract the Fairchilds. Mm -hmm. The Fairchilds are the richest of the rich. These are like kings and queens, but like a step down, maybe like duchesses. You are doing different activities to try and gain their favor because they are going to have preferences of what activities. You're going to be expanding your estate by doing those activities. And you're also going to be inviting people to join in. And each of the people that you're inviting are going to have different triggers or different benefits that they give you. So maybe you invite someone and because they've got a lot of status, they're gonna up your reputation. Or maybe they've got a lot of money, so you're gonna be able to gain some money, which is then gonna allow you to buy upgrades. So the whole game, you are trying to gain reputation, you're trying to gain money so that you can upgrade your estate in order to impress the Fairchilds because the goal at the end is to marry one of those two. That is essentially the game. Now, they finally put this game on BGA. <clears throat> 
So we have been playing it. I mean, we've not played it together, but I assume you've been playing I've it I've been a lot. in a game ever since they yeah. <laughs> released it. So we've been playing a lot of this on VGA. So if you are unsure if this is the right game for you, definitely check it out on there. I find it works pretty well it on does, VGA. Yeah. I would argue this game is definitely a one of those games where you look at it and you're like, holy smokes, that's going to be super confusing. It's not. It is not confusing. I will mention we've only played base Obsession. We yeah. do have the Upstairs Downstairs expansion and we have everything for obsession yes we've only played base we are obsessed while it has a lot going on in it with like sorting the cards and like sorting all the expansions and everything the game mechanics are relatively simple yeah it is do an activity from one of your state tiles mm -hmm. invite guests invite guests and then trigger all of those things that exist so triggering the the room that you're in, the people that you've invited, mm -hmm. and then buy something, rinse, repeat. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then there's going to be like, I can't remember what they're called, if they're like town fairs, or there's certain events yes. that happen yeah. throughout the game that are going to give you some fair. other benefits. I think they're fairs. You're going to be checking in on the fair child a few points throughout the game, and that's when you're going to assess whether or not you've got the right stuff to attract them. And I wasn't sure whether or not Jeff would like it, just I, based on the theme. I very, very, very much like it. If you're looking for Downton Abbey, the board game, this is... Pretty much as close as you're going to get. Yeah, I'm blown away by it. I it's like the love perfect it. little level of combo ness yes. for me. Love, love, love. Next up, uh, also voted on, also by the voted on from our Patreon community is Anachrony from Mind Clash Games. This is one we purchased a while ago. Mm -hmm. We've only played base Anachrony. We do have everything except for I think one or one expansion. Anachrony is a worker placement game in its basic purest form. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I think is super unique about Anachrony is it's got like a time track mm -hmm. and you actually can kind of move back and forth through, through time. time and take advantage of things you might have done earlier on in the game yep. at a later point. I thought it would be way more difficult to get tabled than it was. Yep. I didn't find it was overly complicated. No, there's like you little learned nuances it. and little rules. Like it took me, basically I think I ended up watching maybe John Gets Games play this. Mm -hmm. So I found that to be really helpful because there are a lot of little bits and moving pieces in this once you get going it's fine ultimately just to quickly go through like what happens in this game you are basically trying to build out your little like civilization um, and gain resources before an impact basically kills everyone yeah you want people to kind of come come to your area yeah and you're doing that by sending out your workers but they have to go into exosuits mm -hmm. so you have to have exosuits available for your workers in order to go out and like collect resources and do things and it's like it's got some twists it's probably one of my favorite gaming experiences i've had this year i am shocked that i like this game i ended up learning it because jeff doesn't always like to learn like big games big games that have like a lot of rules because it's just hard to which are my favorite to, games. which are his favorite games so oh. i ended up learning this and i was like kind of dreading it because i'm like oh my god this is going to be so complicated the theme is kind of whatever but i actually when i watched john get games play it i was like Oh, this is really interesting. And then we played it and I freaking loved it. I was like, shocked I at how much Jamie loved liked this it. game. It's so, so interesting because it's a bit of a different take on worker placement. Because, like, you've got your map where you can just place your workers. But then if you want to go to, like, the big, big city, the big world, then you have to get the exosuit. So there's just a lot to, like, think about in this game. There's a lot of, like, triggers. You have to make sure you have enough resources. You have to make sure that you're, like, upgrading your little capital to make sure that it's going to be, like, you're prepared for the impact because there's a point in this game where an impact happens and then things change. Mm -hmm. Like, the way that you then are going to play the game changes. And there's actually goals that you start with, with which we both... We're like, oh, who cares about these goals? And then we totally fudged it. But anyways, I am very excited to play this more. I think our game group is going to adore this game. Mm -hmm. Do you also feel, this is kind of a sidebar here, okay. but do you feel like after you played this and taught this and we, we handled it as well as we did that I feel like we've... Like we could do anything. I feel like we've really progressed. Your ability to teach games has progressed, mm -hmm. and my ability to understand and like just jump in and play games has progressed. Because yeah. I feel like if we had played this two years ago, we would have died. We would have died. <laughs> yeah. The next one I'm very excited for, and that is Flamecraft. Okay, so Flamecraft was sent to us from Cardboard Alchemy, and I, of course, uh, had to get the little red dragon stuffy. First of all, might be one of the cutest games that I've ever seen. 
Yes. Look at this. Like, just freaking look at it. So you have a town map down in front of you, and that town map is a neoprene map, which is not an upgrade. That just comes mm -hmm. with every game. And in the town, you're going to have different shops. You'll start with six starter shops. There's, like, a bread shop, a meat shop, a steel shop. So each of those shops also starts with a starter dragon that matches that resource. Like there's a bread dragon, like come This on. is the bread dragon. So you are in this town with shops. Then there are also dragon cards. You have artisan dragons and those dragons are kind of like the workers in the town, right? So you got your bread dragons, <clears throat> you got your leaf dragons and all that stuff. Then you also have fancy dragons because why wouldn't you have fancy dragons and the fancy dragons are like different objectives that you can reach either during the game or at the end of the game mm -hmm. then there's also enchantment so basically in this game you're going to do one of two things on your turn you're either going to go to a shop collect the resources fire up a dragon which means you get to use its ability play a dragon to that shop use a shop ability use a shop thing. ability and if you fill a shop you actually get to pull out a new shop. So the town can grow from six to 12 shops. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that you can do. The other thing that you can do is you can enchant the shop. So there are enchantment cards laid out in front of you. And basically you just have to pay different resources in order to collect reputation. Which is the main victory point. Exactly. Uh, Whoever has the most reputation at the end of the game wins. That's the game. Yeah, I was going to say simple to play, but the combos can get pretty lengthy. Mm -hmm. Easy to access and play, mm -hmm. but there's a little bit of depth of strategy there that I enjoyed. Yeah, it's definitely like the learn of it was super simple. It's a very, very easy to learn. Mm -hmm. And as we were playing, I was like, oh, this game is going to be like so just like easy and whatever. But like by the end, you get a little bit cutthroat. I do think this game would play better with more people. Yeah, you can play four. up to, you can play one to five, so you can play it solo and you can play up to five so we obviously played it at two we haven't had a chance to play it at anything higher it was like enjoyable it, too it was definitely but we didn't get in each other's too. way as much as i think we would have liked to exactly so like basically if somebody goes to one of the shops you don't it. necessarily block oh, it true, but yeah. you have okay. you can go there but you have to pay whoever else is on it so let's just say that jeff was on it and we were playing with somebody else i would have to spend goods to give to each of them. So mm -hmm. it's a bit more of like a resource trading game at that point. Like if you played this five player, mm -hmm. like the starting shops, mm -hmm. there's there's six of them. So like, what are you gonna do? And Jamie, in typical Jamie fashion, kept going to the shop that I wanted to go to. It's very annoying. And I won. I also won Heat last night, just mm -hmm. so you know. I'm, I'm really, really Oh, fast. I knew. Just I, so you know, I'm it's really, It's not really just fast. so I know, it's so they know. It's so everybody knows that how fast I am. I am really, really happy with this game. I was concerned that it might just be a cute game, that there wasn't a lot of game there. Yep. But I do think that there's definitely plenty of game here. I, yeah, I very much enjoyed it. I didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I did. We also did play with the advanced rules where we each st you start off with your own personal dragon that has an ability oh, that right. you can trigger once per game. My dragon's name was Eric and Jeff's dragon's name was Peter. Mine let me take a turn immediately after my turn as long as a yeah. new shop was placed. And mine let me trigger a shop ability two times in a row. Which, which kind of blew Jeff out of blew the Blew the game away. What's really funny Jamie. is we played and Jeff was like, wait till you see this turn. And I'm just sitting there kind of smirking because I knew I had a 12 point turn coming immediately after that. Like a six to eight turn point turn is, a is good pretty turn. good. And Jamie pulled a 12, a 12 or off. 12 -er. That is Flamecraft. I'm so happy that we have it. And I love my little. I think his name is Pan. Let's put him here. The last game that we have is from AEG and Sir John D. Clare, who I've started the rumor that he has been knighted. Yeah. He told me he wasn't, but you know, some people like to keep secrets about stuff like Fun that. Fun fact, John, you Fun have fact, been John, by right. us. Yep. Ready, set, bet, Jeffrey. Ready, set, bet is, I, I'm just going to say it's a party game mm -hmm. because it pretty much is. Ready, set, bet is as close to like a betting, horse racing betting game I've ever played. Ultimately, yes. one person, there is now an app that does this. We haven't so used the we app. We haven't used the app, but one person would be rolling dice and the dice represent different horses on a racetrack. Yeah, it's one to 10, one to 12, because that's how high dice go. 
obviously the odds that like the seven horse is going to go faster on the track is pretty high because seven can be rolled a ton because it's two dice. So the odds on like the 11 and 12 horse are much, much better because unlikely they're going to win the race because it's not going to be rolled as much. And this is all happening in real time. So one person is rolling dice and calling out the horses. Like, and moving the horses. Oh, we have seven and seven's out of the gate and blah, 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 blah. And everyone else around the table is throwing these little chits out yeah. to represent their bets on this massive betting board. Yeah which have all the horses, all the odds. Yes. And there's like prop bets at the top. So it's like if blue and black are second and third, you win. And mm -hmm. it's all of these things. And you only have so many chits. You bet on all, yeah. And it's the, there's, they're all multiplied, but it's all happening in real time. And once someone places a bet somewhere, that's blocked. Yeah, you Unless can. you have like a special token that lets you also place. Yeah. And everyone's yelling, everyone's laughing, everyone's screaming and throwing stuff out onto the betting board. Mm -hmm. And ultimately at the end, if you've gotten your bet wrong, you lose points. Yep. But if you've gotten your bet right, you gain points. It's and like you, real horses. You gain points if uh, you bet on you know first, second, or third, depending on where you've placed it. Like all of these multipliers, there's like a bit of an asymmetrical ability that each player can get. Well, they're they're called VIP cards, and yep. it gives you like a little bonus. One thing might be like you can place your bet where somebody else places a bet. One mm -hmm. might be you gain an extra betting token that you yep. can use. So there's a bunch of different things that break and, the game. A and little. your betting chits actually multiply your bets. So yes, if exactly. you have like a five chit and you place it on a really high bet and you hit on that, you're gonna score a ton of money. Yes. And ultimately, you're playing it over four rounds, and whoever has the most money at the end of the four rounds wins. Yeah, it is so much fun. It definitely gets everybody really excited. I would say that if you're going to be playing this with people, play with a bit of a larger group, number one, and make sure that you kind of amp people up. Yeah. Because from what we've heard, we didn't experience it, but from what we've heard, sometimes it takes people a couple rounds before they kind of like really get into it. This to me is kind of like a camel up adjacency. Mm -hmm. Like you need to go all in. You like need a few people that are going to get, get the excited. group running. Yeah, you need to yeah. get loud. And the person who is rolling the dice and calling the game can also play the game with everyone else. They can multitask and they can also throw bets and, and all of that stuff. So don't feel like there's going to be one person who's sitting out, but they would have to be a very good multitasker. I do think there is something really fun and special about having a human do it that is like really oh, loud yeah. and like yeah. really into it and doing like performing as the announcer because that mm -hmm. was a really fun part. I don't think it's a spoiler, experience. so we can mention it. Like when yeah. we played Ons from Twitch, Bonsinator. Bonsinator was the one rolling the dice and screaming yeah, things out. So if she you know did, Bonds, you know how she did an incredible job. Was. So if yeah. you have someone that's like super vocal and high energy, definitely get them to roll the dice because it just adds, I think, to that yeah. experience for sure. It's great. It's a John D. Claire game. Like, could you possibly not it play was a John so, D. Claire game? So, oh, so, 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 so good. So, 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 so. Yeah. That's everything for today. Those are another five mini reviews. I would be very interested to know if you have played any of these games. What do you think? Are there any that you're hoping to try? Definitely let us know down below in the comments. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in buying board games, like any of the many that we mentioned today, any of the five. Obsession might be hard to find. Obsession but. is a little bit harder to find, though it does sometimes show up we've seen on it pop up every board once game bliss we've seen mm -hmm. it a couple of times yep. and yeah you can definitely check these out at your friendly local gaming store and for us that is boardroom game cafe yes it is that's all we have thank you so much for watching if you like what you see please subscribe we hope to see you again soon and now we say goodbye goodbye later days so, or sometimes we'll be on our way home from being away and we get really excited to see our dogs and we go dodge 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 yeah, okay. that's true. We're that nerds. is the thing we do. All right, the next one that was voted on, but the next one that was voted on. Anyways, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> I thought the the meeples are great. The meeples are great, yeah. yeah but the miniatures are better. <laughs> I had to burp. I was literally about to talk and I burped. Uno tra. Give me just one night. Una noche. Remember that song? Yeah.